It's Crystal from Essentially Tarot. Welcome back to my channel for part three of my Oracle deck collection. Um, I'm having some weird lighting today, so hopefully you guys can see all right. Um, I'll try to kind of lighten it up in post and see if that helps, but let's jump right into the third part of uh, the Oracle deck collection. All right, so I thought I would start off with actually my daughter's decks. Um, she is going to be nine in September and she sometimes likes to sit with me and also pull out some cards and oops Sorry about that. I moved the camera um, She likes to sit with me and pull out some cards and and you know get messages of her own sometimes So the first deck that she really likes to use is the Doreen Virtue Magical Unicorn Oracle cards um I know, I know, there's a lot of controversy and whatnot, but um, this deck is no longer actively in print. You still can find it every now and then, um, kind of popping around the internet. A lot of people are selling off their Doreen Virtue decks for a crazy amount of money. Um, here's the little white book that comes with it. Um, it's pretty simple. There's, you know, a little page and a half for each card. Um, and I love this for her because A, it's unicorns, and she really likes unicorns, she enjoys them. Um, but they are very young messages. I don't think that means you couldn't use this as an adult. You, you certainly could, but I feel like they're tailored to a younger audience. Um, so here you can see you have brothers and sisters, let go of stress, exercise, and then there's like a little added message down here below the keyword. Um, but they are very friendly <laughs> um, and they're very accessible for her like she does she doesn't have a hard time with this deck we will usually use it together because she is so young and we'll talk about what the messages say um, we'll talk about what they mean you know we'll read from the book and then talk about what that's saying to us um, but uh, again if if you are really drawn to unicorns and this is a deck that you want to get your hands on and you are not a child you're an adult i feel like you could still make these messages work for you um but they are really friendly um helpful messages for a younger audience so um yeah this is one that she pulls out a lot and again it's it's helps it, it it's helps oh my goodness it helps i feel like it's important for her to be able to put words to things and you know i feel like the messages that come through in this deck for her are timed perfectly <laughs> um and you know they're things that we can talk about together to kind of um solidify things that are going on at home lessons that we're learning at home and things like that so this is one of her decks i'll show you her decks first because we'll just get them all out of the way oh i just keep kicking this tripod today i'm so sorry you guys i have a different setup going on because we have like the weird light going on over there i kind of moved where i usually set up the next deck we have that is hers is the children's spirit animal cards by stephen d farmer with jessica camacho and the illustrations are by pamela anzalotti this deck is an older deck but i feel like it's still out there um Here's your little white book. There's a little bit more going on in here than in, say, the Doreen Virtue deck. There's, you know, kind of the message from the card, and then they give you a, a couple of activities to try that match the card, um, which is cool because I feel like children learn through action. They learn through doing, so it is nice. You can see my, my daughter edged half of her deck herself. She likes kind of like when you... It's made that way, she just said from the other room. Um, she likes when you shuffle it and you kind of get the, the different, the white and the orangey red. So here's the backs, they match the box, they're very cute. And here's what the fronts look like. And again, you have your keyword, you have a nice big message at the bottom for them. And again, she likes to use this with her unicorn deck, especially, <laughs> she likes to use them together. And I feel like, again, they're very age appropriate for a younger crowd. Um, I feel like it's a great introduction to Oracle for younger kids. Like here's Hummingbird, cheer up. Uh, ladybug, notice the little things. Rabbit, ask for help. Um, bear, stand up for yourself. There is a unicorn in this deck as well. Um, but I just feel like it's, it's nice. It's empowering. It's, again, it's a really nice way to get 
a younger crowd um, kind of using Oracle alongside you. It's not anything that's too complicated for them as you know if they're reading age they can read the cards themselves um the book they might need a little bit more assistance with just because again it does have like the message that you want to kind of go over with them and then the activities um but a really nice again child friendly deck hence it's the children animal spirits or spirit animals card Z oh my goodness <laughs> i swear i can read um so that is her other deck that she likes to use now on to her third deck she has three and i picked this up for her because she loves dragons now these are dragon oracle cards by diana cooper the artwork is by carla lee morrow this is not a children's deck this is an adult deck um so if you are someone who is an adult who is very into dragons this might be your jam i find this to be um a little out there for even my taste um, just because of the way it's organized so you have fourth dimensional dragons fifth dimensional dragons seventh dimensional dragons and ninth dimensional dragons um, dimensions aren't really a thing that I work with so there's some times where my daughter will pull a card from this and be like, Mommy, what does this say? What is what is this talking about? And I'm like, mm, let's go to the book because I am not even sure. <laughs> um, but it does give you, you know, the card. It gives you the message on the card. It tells you about the card and it gives you guidance from the card for each one. Um, again, not a children's deck. So it is a little deeper, a little more, um, uh, I don't know a little less accessible, I guess, for kids. But again, she likes dragons. So I had found this at a reasonable price and I picked it up for her thinking, you know, it was something we could work uh, with. And again, it's not anything too outlandish. Like this one's Earth and Water Dragon creates the foundation for new growth. A fresh start is coming with new opportunities. Nurture your ideas and harvest the abundance. Um, but there's talk about like expand your casual chakra, um, let your DNA be reprogrammed and light codes activated. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot for some adults, let alone, you know, again, she's going to be nine. So this, again, is not a children's deck. It is the deck she uses. I have not used it myself because um, it's hers. Um, but again, here you have like Sunshine Yellow Dragon helps you to help animals, serve animals, heal, respect, and understand them. I think that's nice. I don't think there's anything in here that... Um, is inappropriate for her at any at, in any capacity I just think it's a little deeper and she does need a little more help with these than she does the other two decks so those are my daughter's Oracle decks how pretty is that dragon um, these are what she likes to sit down and work with when we sit down together so I thought I'd start off with those because I feel like Maybe there aren't a lot of children out there who are into Oracle and Tarot. Maybe there are, but I thought it'd be nice just to show what my nine-year-old likes to work with. So those are hers. Um, let's jump into something that's not hers, shall we? Okay. So next up, this one is fairly new to me, but I have been working with it a lot over the last week. Um, this is the Healers of the Earth Oracle by Mandy Peterson. This is a big oracle, you guys. This one has 73 cards. Um, I actually backed um, her newest deck. You can see I have some cards. This box is kind of a pain. You see these cards stuck down in here. <laughs> one of them is the title card that came with the deck. And this one is a card, an extra card that she had signed for me. Um, but I had backed her latest deck on Kickstarter, um, which is the Past Lives Oracle. I don't, oh, no, not Past Lives. Mm, Archetype Oracle, I think. I don't even know. Is that terrible? I'll try to remember and I'll, I'll link it below. Um, but you had the option when you backed the Kickstarter of... Um, one or both of her current existing oracle decks so this is the one that i choose to this is the one that i chose the healers of the earth oracle here's your little white book um it gives you an upright message and a reverse message for each of these 73 cards is that what i said right yeah 73. now i find the way she set this up very interesting 
each card on the back tells you kind of where it falls into. So this one says spiritual hygiene, uh, personal, emotional, purification and release, um, hypervigilance and illusion. Oh, that's another one. Um, so you can see like industry and technology. There's different um, spiritual collective is another one. Um, but yeah, so there's different... There's different, um, oh my goodness, classifications for the cards. So it's interesting because you can actually use these cards almost in a way that's double-sided. So I've been playing around a little bit with like pulling a card and okay, this is spiritual intelligence. And then, you know, the next card, I'll flip over it and say, okay, so what is my message for my spiritual intelligence? And I kind of read it that way, which I think is kind of fun. Um, you don't have to, but you can. It's just like another way that you can utilize the deck. Oh, these are all over the place. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> We're going to be flipping and flipping. Um, so you have your title. So no place like home. You have your number. And then you have some keywords. So this one says the comfort of home, family, leisure. Now, she made this deck, I was reading in the book, from public domain artwork. She kind of chose the artwork that she wanted to use for her deck and then kind of licensed it for her deck's use. Now... All of the artwork is fairly cohesive um, as you can see like there's not anything outlandishly different going on but what I don't love are the people in this deck they almost look like Sims and I understand again it was public artwork that she kind of snatched up but like this I didn't show you that card because I got distracted some of them are so beautiful like this to me is very beautiful this this card drives me crazy this black swan an unforeseen event a surprise hindsight and she's got like the she's got like the tourist peace sign eyeball going on um and i just it feels silly to me there's a couple of them that are like that i feel like i would have liked this deck a lot better without the people um especially since it reads really well. I've been really enjoying it. I've been using it alongside of actually a deck that it doesn't match at all. I've been using it alongside the Medieval Scapini right now. Um, and it just, oops, well, that one's on the floor. Sorry, guys. I just feel like it works so well with that deck. I feel like it could work with any deck. I feel like it just has, um, you know, the choices and the keywords and the phrases that she's used, the way she set it up is very smart. I just don't necessarily enjoy the people. The people are my problem. Um, but again, it is, if you can see past that, it is a beautiful deck as far as the message. I just want to show you the one that I think is so funny to me for some reason. Where is she? Well, first of all, her hair is crazy. But there's one that I came across it and I was just like, what in the world? What in the early 2000s is this? I guess I'll turn this over since they all seem to be kind of reversed. Um, her. <laughs> this one. Um, the Pleasant Distraction card. That hat. Oh my. And I just, it cracks me up. So yeah, the people are not my favorite. The people I find a little distracting for myself. You know, maybe they don't bother you. And that's fine. Um, again, they don't bother me enough that I don't use it. I absolutely use it. Um, and again, I do enjoy it. It's just the people kind of throw me off a little bit. It is gilded in silver. And again, it's a really nice deck. It's a hefty deck at 73 cards. Um, but I feel like the messages come through so clearly and it works so well, again, with a deck that it doesn't really necessarily match aesthetically, but it, it just reads so nicely. Oh my goodness, I keep running into this. I'm sorry, guys. So that is the Healers of the Earth Oracle by Mandy Peterson. Um, next up, I have two super popular ones. Um, I'll show them one at a time because uh, there's no point in showing them together, I guess. The first one is the Work Your Light Oracle Cards by Rebecca Campbell with the artwork by Danielle Noel. Um, I think we have all seen Danielle Noel's artwork everywhere because it's just so beautiful. Here is your little white book and it gives you your card, the message on the card. You got about a page, maybe a little over a page, and then an action for the card. Um, admittedly, I have not worked with either of these decks yet. They both came in kind of relatively close to each other and recently I kind of sat on these and waited on them for a while because I wanted to see if they were worth the hype. I wanted to see 
you know, if the hype was going to die down. Um, but I came across both of them um, on sale. And so I finally just grabbed them. And they're just really beautiful. Again, I can't really speak to the messages yet because I haven't used them. I'm super excited to use them, which is actually part of why I haven't. Because <laughs> um, I find sometimes when I have a lot of decks that I'm waiting to work with, and something like this comes in and I'm like, oh, it's so pretty, I can't wait. I kind of make myself wait. So that way I give some of the other decks that I've been waiting to work with a chance first. Um, I don't know why, it just feels right. It feels like I don't wanna kind of create preference right away without working with something. So yeah, I've been sitting on this one. I haven't started working with it yet. Um, and I actually, spoiler alert, I just got the Star Child in. Um, the other day, so I'm really excited to kind of pull those out together So that is the work your light Oracle again. I think everyone has seen this um, And likewise, I think everyone has seen this one as well this is The starseed Oracle also by Rebecca Campbell and Danielle Noel This box is really cool, but I was looking at it the other day It is so sharp like you could hurt yourself on that. So just FYI be careful so again, it, it is Danielle Noel's artwork, so it, it's very similar artwork, um, very similar setup in the book. Again, the card name, what it says on the card, you have your description, and then you have a starseed soul inquiry. So whereas before you had, I think it was an action, now you have an inquiry, so a question. So these are the backings on these guys. Her artwork is so beautiful. It's so soft and just, I don't know. You could sit here and stare and just get lost in it. I think it's just so pretty. So pretty. Like, I wish my whole life looked like Daniel, Daniel Noel's artwork. <laughs> um, so again, I haven't worked with this one either. Again, they came in around the same time. I had other decks ahead of them that I wanted to work with. So I am really excited to get to know them, to again use them not only with the star child i really want to pull these out with the muse tarot as well i feel like um they're gonna look really nice with that deck as well and of course it's not just about what they look like that is trippy through the camera it's trippy in person too but through the camera i was like ooh. um i feel like it's not just about what they look like obviously i want to see how they read i want to see what kind of messages come through um but i do love a good deck pairing so i i look forward to working with those together um you know, the Star Child and the Muse, I feel like will complement these, obviously, Star Child. But anyway, <laughs> so just rambling. I am gonna eventually edge both of these, I'm sure, in some sort of beautiful complementary color. Haven't done even that yet because again, I've been kind of ignoring the fact that they're here because I just, I don't want to, uh, to jump in and kind of ignore what I've been working with. <laughs> So silly but that's how I roll so the last one I'm gonna pull out for you guys is a little guy this is the Adora Bissell Oracle it is in a little tin which is super fun um, now who is this by oh my gosh do I know no, I don't. It doesn't say anywhere in her book. I'm, I'm looking. Oh, yes, it does. I'm so sorry. So this is from uh, Pixie Occult on Etsy, um, which actually the email is James Brothwell. So James, I apologize if I called you a she. Um, but yes, so from uh, Pixel Occult on Etsy. And this is this is your little white book while I have it out here. And you'll see it shows you. Oops not that it tells you a little bit about how to use the deck um, it gives you the theme and whether it's positive um, it gives you oops I guess down here the creature and the classification um, and then it gives you the theme whether it's positive or negative or neutral the element it tells you about the creature as well um, so let's open it up so I can show you this is one of my favorite little oracles it's so cute and it's just so strange I think that's why I adore it. Here's the backs. Um, look at how cute. So you see you have their name, their element, and then a keyword. Um, they're just adorable. I couldn't pass them up, especially because I am 
from New Jersey and there is absolutely a Jersey Devil card in here. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, there he is. Sorry, I don't mean to skip that one, but there he is. Look how cute he is. So this is like 90% of why I bought this deck, other than it being really adorable. Um, that Jersey Devil sold me on it. So this deck is super cute. Like I said, it's cute, it's creepy, it's very unusual which is why I love it. Um, I will say I need to work more with this deck. I did work with it for a little while, um, and I feel like maybe I just didn't have it paired up with the right deck. I just was getting so kind of confusing messages sometimes, um, and I just, again, I just think that maybe, maybe I need another go around with a different companion deck. I feel like they just weren't kind of playing nicely together. Um, and it's going to be interesting to try to find a deck that this complements aesthetic wise. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I really want to love it. So I kind of was willing to overlook any of those confusing messages. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, this one's my favorite. The little ghost, he's got a little hat on and the keywords indoor. I love him. So yeah, so that is the Adore Abyssal Oracle. Very cute. I love the little tin. I do kind of wish that the book fit in the tin. Um, but again, the book isn't so crazy large that you can't just tuck both of these in your bag and go. So it is what it is. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification so that you uh, know when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for hanging out. I love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.